Can you help her, Doctor? She's in a critical stage. If we can break the fever... You're only child. No, I have a boy, Ted. He's out in the wagon. You want me to get him, Doctor? Is he feverish? No. There's no point in my seeing him. All right now, dear. Open your mouth. Come along, open your mouth. Could I try, please, Doctor? Jenny, dear. Take this magic sweet for me. It'll make you feel cool and happy. Mr. Hale tells me you've had a great deal of experience with typhoid, Miss Duggan. Too much. It might be well for us to examine you. Me? But I'm not sick. Well, you were with Mr. and Mrs. Clinton all those weeks, Annie. Maybe the typhoid affected you in a way we couldn't know. But I'm not feverish. Annie, will you do it for me? If that's what you want, Dan. Perhaps you'd like to make the little one comfortable first. Where are you staying in town? Well, we, uh, we hadn't thought that far ahead. I, I suppose we could stay at the hotel. Excuse me. Doc. I'm busy, Loomis. You hear that little girl's got the typhoid? We're sorry, mister, but... Uh... Don't plan to stay in Tres Cruces. Now, just a minute, Loomis. You listen. Last time we had the typhoid, we buried 19 people. But we don't want that again. This little girl's fighting for her life. She needs all the odds we can give her. Well, do what you can for her, Doc. Just remember, it's us here in town that comes first. Sorry, mister, but I got kids of my own. I hope they're never sick in a strange town. Be watching to see if they leave town. We've been caring for her in the wagon. There's no reason we can't go on doing the same. I'd like for her to be close by these next 24 hours. Well, we could make camp in that little grove we passed, just about a half mile east of town. There's another possibility. Well, we don't want to put you on the wrong side of your own people, Doctor. It wouldn't be the first time. I don't know how it is with you, Mr. Hale, but real wickedness, thieving and such as that, doesn't trouble my soul as much as the petty meanness of decent people. Well, Miss Duggan, did we get along with that examination? I'll stay with Jenny. All right. This is a pure waste of your time, Doctor. You won't be afraid to stay here while I'm gone in town, will you? There's nothing to be afraid of with Mr. Wooster. Of course not. <laughs> Dad, won't those men know you played a trick on them if they see you going back to the doctor's office? Well, I, uh, 
I don't mean to let him see me, Eddie. Charlie, you take good care of him. Don't you worry about a thing. We'll let you know how Jenny's making out. Be careful, Mr. Hyatt. be easier coming from someone she knew. What hope can I give her? I'm sure Dr. Baldwin knows more about me now than I do myself. How's Jenny? The angel's still breathing heavy. Has she cried out at all? No, she's been very quiet. I don't know why we came this long way. This doctor does no more for than we could if we never left the train. Annie, I thought it was important that we see a doctor, not only for Jenny, but for you. Why are you so worried for me? The doctor found nothing at all wrong with me, did he? What is it, Mr. Hare? Has he told you something he wouldn't tell me? Before me stood a defenseless girl, a fawn, waiting to be struck down by my hand. Annie Duggan, whom I had come to know and love. Now, when you're all through talking in circles, I'd like to tell you a few things. You can't blame us for being concerned, Mr. Hale. Well, concern is one thing, Mrs. Leeds, and panic is another. Now, I'm not a doctor, but all indications are that Mr. and Mrs. Clinton do have the typhoid fever. How did they get it? I mean, it's not like we were in a dirty town or on a crowded ship. It's in the air, the fevers. There was a doctor in Boston. He said it came from Phil. There's no one cleaner than Laura Clinton, unless it'd be Annie Duggan. Well, where the fever came from, we can't tell. But we want to do everything we can to help the Clintons get over it and to keep it from spreading. Well, who's going to take care of them? After all, she's only a servant girl, not a nurse. I'll manage. Have you had the typhoid? No. Well, who'll look after you when you get it? Annie won't lack for someone to look after. Aren't you going a little fast, Mrs. Leeds? Well, it seems to me this is the proper time to ask questions, before an epidemic starts. What would you suggest? That the Clinton wagon be completely separated from the rest of the train. Leave them out here to die. We'll let Mr. Hale arrange an escort back to Fort Defiance. I can't even spare one man. I wouldn't think of sending him back with less than four. Mr. Hale, there's no need for anyone else to be touched by this trouble. Put our wagon last and let me make camp a little apart from the rest. It'll be the same as if we were in quarantine. Well, that's just what I was going to do, Annie. It's the only possible solution. And what if she gets the fever? Well, we'll meet that problem when we come to it. But in the meantime, you can all help yourselves and help each other by being particularly careful about the water you drink and the food you eat. Now, if you get sick, we want to know about it so we can help you. But don't make yourselves sick by thinking about it. That's all. I hope you don't feel I was heartless just now. No. I don't blame you for being worried, for Johnny's sake. He's all the family I have now. Aren't you worried about your children? They're a sturdy lot. I hope they won't get the fever. Excuse me, Martha. Well, now, if it isn't the uncrowned king of Blarney Castle, with such a sad face as the man is wearing. Danny, I hardly know you. I wish I could take over here. It seems to me you've got two somebodies dependent on you. Well, I'll help you all I can. And risk the fever? No. I had the typhoid fever in the war. You can't take it twice. Now get all the rest you can. It's tiredness that gives it a hold on you. It's them we must worry about. Now you worry about them, and I'll worry about you. Uh, well, all right. 
right now, it's the only thing to do. I was so, so, so hot. left me in the sun, so bright, hot. Oh, please, there must be some shade. Don't fret yourself. It'll soon be cooler. This water's cool. Fresh from the spring. Daughter couldn't have been kinder. Jarvis and I have done so little to deserve your kindness. You took me into your home. And he's so dumb I came down the stairs backwards, being used to only a ladder at home. <laughs> We're so lost in our own troubles that we didn't give any thought to you or anybody else. But they'll soon be over. Sure. You're going to do fine in California. I spoke to Mr. Hale. He knows that you're to have everything that's ours. Please. It's not much. When I think of all that Papa left me, it was dwindled to a flapping canvas wagon, yesterday's clothes, and a few dollars in a sugar canister. It's all yours, Annie. Use it better than I did my legacy. I won't hear any more of this talk. You're going to be fine. We'll all see California together. One thing I finally learned, to face the unpleasant. Might as well. It doesn't go away just because you turn your head or close your eyes. Don't cry, Annie. It's the Lord's will. Maybe it's a kindness. Jarvis will be spared the pain of trying to make another new start at his age. If only there was a town with a doctor. Would Mr. Hale have done all a doctor could do. That song, that hush song. Sing it for me again, Annie, please. Oh, hush a by my darling, Shawnee. Shush a by my darling, Shawnee. Through the night until the morning, angels will watch Shawnee. Shawnee, show you go out and get some fresh air for a while. I'll be here if they need anything. Well, I... Go on now. That's an order. Well, I'll be back to bathe. You give some thought to yourself for a change. to see you. But you mustn't come any closer, you darling. They uh, 
send their love and a present. Oh. Eddie made that necklace. Hey, Eddie. Why, it's a beautiful necklace. Oh. Jenny sends you the baby tooth we pulled this morning. Oh. Thank you, Jenny. Now it's off to bed with both of you. And you should have been under the covers an hour ago. Good night. They miss you, honey. And I miss you. And I worry for you being close to me this way. How are the Clintons? Twice I thought he'd gone to the country of the quiet, and then he rallied and looked at me as if he knew me for the first time in days. Hmm. Annie, don't go back to that wagon. Chris and I can stay with them. My place is there, Dan. I want them so to get well. But you've done all you can do. Sometimes it comes over me. I carry only grief to those I'm close to. Oh, Annie. It's like some poor body's put a curse on me. Now, stop it. You're just tired, mm -mm. sick at heart. No, no. I've thought about it before. Seven of us sailed from Belfast. And where are they now? My brothers, sisters, mother, father, died of ship fever and buried at sea. With all the things you've seen in the past few days, I'm sure it's stirred up a lot of painful memories. And the O'Connors. Where are they? They took care of me in New York when I knew no one else, Dan. They're dead. Dennis burned to death in the fire. Kathleen and we, Sarah, wasted with the fever. And now it's Mr. and Mrs. Clinton. Danny, listen. I don't know of anyone that wouldn't feel the same way. How many of us haven't seen death take those who were nearest and dearest to us? Annie, haven't I the right to feel cursed, too? I, who lost a wife and boy baby in the same night, I'm sorry for playing the banshee. Ah. That's my girl. I think you should look forward to what's in store for the both of us. That's your good medicine. You're a wonderful, strong man, Dan Hyatt. Don't you know that? But gentle with it all. Ah. Krishna Makri. You know, you could... You could cuss at me in Gaelic, and I'd never be the wiser. What does that mean? Krishna Makri? Oh, I don't know how you say it in English. I suppose it would be the pulse of my heart. Well, Krishna Makri. What is it, Duke? You'd better come back to the Clinton wagon right away. As they were together in life, may they also be united in death. May the bond of love that joined them here not be broken but increase in strength throughout all eternity. Amen. Never heard anything to match it, Bill. It's two of them together. Tying together like that, not 20 minutes apart either. Mrs. Clinton wanted to be first, to be waiting for him. Well, I guess we'd better get back to the train. What about the Clinton wagon, Chris? It and everything in it belongs to Annie. Oh, no, handling it alone is too much for her. Well, we'll make out of the rain. No, I... I need the wagon. Why? For keeping to myself in quarantine. What are you talking about? The typhoid's gone. Buried with the Clintons. We won't know that for a while. Annie's right. To be on the safe side, she should stay to herself for at least two weeks. Two weeks? Well, she's been nursing the Clintons for almost three. Now, if she were coming down with typhoid, it would have happened by now. 
We don't want to take any chances, Dan. Two weeks? What's two weeks in a lifetime? I'd wait two months or two years before I'd risk giving the fever to anyone else. It's not often you find a woman as wise as she is winsome, Dan. And when did you kiss the Blarney, Mr. Hale? <laughs> Don't look so down in the mouth, Dan Hyatt. Two weeks will pass in no time at all. All right, Annie. But when they have passed, I won't let flood, famine, or pestilence separate us again. How are you feeling? Oh, fine. A bit lonely. Well, thank goodness the two weeks will soon be over. We've all missed you, Annie. That's kind of you to say it. Well, it's the plain truth. Mr. Trumbull was saying last night, you know, the heart's gone out of this bunch since Annie's not singing and dancing among us. Well, you tell Mr. Trumbull he'll soon be looking for an excuse to be rid of me. There's no fear of that. <laughs> you take care of yourself now. You do the same. Hello, Martha. Hello, Kathy. Oh, I'll be finished in a second. You always do the right thing, don't you? I lay no claim to that. Most women, if they'd spent weeks nursing the Clintons, would, would have rushed back into things without any thought for anyone but themselves. But not you. And I wouldn't want anyone to be taken with the fever through my fault. Mr. Hale tells me this isn't your first experience with typhoid. That you've escaped it before. I pray that my good luck holds. Perhaps it's more than luck. What else could it be? Yes. What else? I can't see anything wrong with you. It's been a full two weeks. So welcome back to the land of the living. Thanks, Mr. Hale. Well, why so solemn? I thought you'd dance a jig. What's worrying you now? When the fever's been all around, how is it that I've never had it? <laughs> Annie, you're priceless. Here we spend two weeks worrying you'll get the fever. You don't. Now you're disappointed you haven't. Not disappointed, but isn't it strange? Strange and wonderful and nothing to worry about. Annie? Well, don't disappoint your friends. Been two weeks, you know. Thanks. <laughs> Annie, you're, you're all right then? Mr. Hale said if I was any healthy, I'd be sick with it. We missed you, Annie. It's been lonely without you. If you have been lonely, think of me. Nobody tells stories like you do. And Dad told me said a word in two weeks. Uh -huh. When I did, they wished I hadn't. Lady Caroline Wolpe has missed you most. She's been too sad to eat. Well, it looks as if the poor dear has fair wasted away. We'll have to think of some way to coax her back to the table. I know a way we can get her to eat. Oh. And what's that, Evie? Hey, Thump tonight for supper. Yeah, Thump! Thump, Annie, please, Thump! Annie, 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 Annie. Thank you. You want that, Mr. Wooster? Well, as long as you're forcing it on me, I wouldn't want it to go waste, you know. <laughs> Annie, I don't know how you do it, but in this dish, you make the potatoes seem important. <laughs> It's an old dog and secret. You notice they're Irish potatoes. <laughs> sure wish you'd give this recipe to Charlie. <laughs> well, I'd be glad to. You should be wasting your time, Annie. Give this recipe to a cook like Charles, it'd be the same as 
Handing a Comanche a violin and expecting to hear a Beethoven sonata come out of it. <laughs> Here, you sit down, have your supper. I'll finish. Wait, huh? huh? Mrs. Trumple? Oh, not another bite. Having you back and seeing everybody so happy is better than food. Johnny, I was wondering wherever you were. His mother didn't want him to come. Oh, why was that? I don't know. Is all the thump gone? No, I've saved you some. But I don't know if you should be here against your mother's wishes. It'll be all right. You going to tell a story? Of course she is. More than one. I want to hear the one about the meanest man in No, the Shannon Mermaid. No, the, the last gleamer. Supper first, stories after. You are serving everybody else, and you're the guest of honor. A fine celebration. The best. Don't you think I'm a generous man? To feed so many? Well, to share you with so many. <laughs> I was sorry not to see Martha Leeds here. Well, maybe the Martha doesn't like parties much. Well, just so long it's parties she doesn't like. I'm not sure what Martha likes or doesn't like. I haven't spoken to her often, but when I have, she seemed to be saying one thing and thinking another. Well, there's not many that are as direct as you are, Annie. Don't judge her too harshly. It's not for me to judge her in any way. Come on, have your supper. <laughs> After a meal like that, a man needs to hike a few miles and walk it off. Why walk when you can dance? Come on, Annie, let's dance. All right, Charlie, the dishes. They'll wait, they'll wait. Come on. <laughs> Everybody dance, folks. Okay, Bobby, have a little bit. Get it off. Say. I, uh, I've got something to say, and I count on you as a friend. I'd like for you to hear it. I'm glad you count me as a friend, Dan. I'd like to speak as one. Fire away. Don't let your children spend so much time with Annie Duggan. You call that speaking as a friend? Listen to me, Dan, for the children's sake. My children are never happier than when they're with Annie. I intend for them to be with her as much as possible. Excuse me. Hey, Annie, Annie, let Charlie catch his breath before he collapses. Whoa, whoa, music man. Friends, I'd like to tell you all something. With Annie's blessing, Annie has consented to be my wife. We're going to be married just as soon as we reach Trace Cruces. Wonderful. Now you're really going to be part of our family. Oh, yes. No escape now. Well, you two lucky people deserve all the happiness you give each other. Thank you, Chris. Oh, thank you, Mr. Dan. <laughs> if you won't marry me, Dan must be second choice. <laughs> Congratulations. She'll marry me, Charlie, but she'll dance with you. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Dan. <clears throat> thank you. Dan. Thanks. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I hope nothing mars your happiness. Come along, Johnny. Oh, Ma! What's the matter, Annie? Nothing. I'm just chilly. Oh, we can't have you shivering. Hey! Play us a tune to warm us! <laughs> huh? There, now. You're nice and snug. When you're married to Paul, will you make thump every day? Well, maybe not every day. Every day except Thursday? 
That sounds reasonable enough. And twice on my birthday. And twice on your birthday. Annie, you won't change when you're married, will you? Only for the better. We like you just the way you are. <laughs> we'll be the only kids on the train with a mother who's a friend, too. <sighs> Good night, Annie. Here now, why aren't you asleep? I go to sleep, but Lady Caroline keeps waking me up. Oh, I see. Well, maybe we'll have to find Lady Caroline another bed. Oh, no. I thought if you'd sing to her, she might go to sleep. All right. I'll sing to her if you close your eyes and try not to listen. Oh, hush -a by my darling shore. Shush a by my darling shore through the night until the morning angels will watch Am I marrying you only to lose you to my children? I'll try to save you a little time. I wonder if you'd care so much for me if I were childless. You're well supplied, so we needn't worry. <laughs> oh, Annie, I love you. And I love you, Dan. These have been empty days without you. I want to be a good wife to you, Dan. To give you only happiness. Do you know something? You will. Annie, I haven't spoken to you about my first wife. She's a lovely woman. Good mother. Everything a man could ask for in a wife. When you've had the likes of her, how can you stop to give me the time of day? We were so much alike that neither one of us could ever do anything the other didn't expect. But you know, you're the unexpected, the unpredictable. I found you late. Maybe that's why I treasure you so. When I was a little tight, younger than Jenny, I asked an old woman who was a neighbor to us, how could I be certain to find and keep my true love? She gave me a charm to say, Oh, so it's black magic you've been using on me. <laughs> Every day she told me to say it, three times over. You for me, and I for thee, and for none else. Your face to mine, and your head turned from all others. Hmm. Let's see now. You for me. And I for thee and for none else. Some people thought it queer. A man of Donald standing who'd stooped to marry a mermaid he knew nothing about. Jenny, don't you like the story? Hmm. Don't you feel well? I'm just tired. What's the matter? Eddie, would you help Jenny to lie down in the back, please? Is she sick? Maybe it's just a touch of the sun.
my baby. Lady Caroline's here. Lady Caroline's here. What do you think, Chris? I hate to say it, but I'm afraid it's typhoid. No. It mustn't be. How can it be typhoid, Mr. Hale? You said so yourself. I was fine. I know, Annie. But I also know this child has typhoid fever. There'll be no burning of any wagons. You're an intelligent woman, Mrs. Leeds. Do you think putting the torch to the Clinton wagon is the answer for us? We listened to you, Mr. Hale, when the Clintons first took the fever. They died. But that wasn't the end. Now Dan Hyatt's child has it. I can't speak for Dan, but if Jenny were my child, I'd blame you. That's your privilege? If you don't take immediate steps to protect the other children, then I say it's our duty as parents to, to act as we see fit. No help. Uh, we need a doctor. There isn't any. There's one in Trace Cruces. I think the best thing to do is take the family into town. That way, Jenny will have the proper care. And Eddie, too, if he should come down. With it. It'll make things easier here, too, won't it? Be the best all around. Of course, you'll come with us, too, Annie. Whatever you think is best. Annie, there's no kind or easy way to say this. But did you ever hear of anyone who was called a carrier? No. Well, it sometimes happens with typhoid. A person seems perfectly well, but he's carrying the disease inside of him. It does him no harm, but in spite of himself, he passes it on to others. No. I knew a man like this years ago. He was as innocent of what he was doing as you are. You're saying it was from me Jenny got this fever? From me? Not just Jenny, but Mr. and Mrs. Clinton, and Kathleen, and we, Sarah. And maybe dozens and dozens of other poor souls I can't give a name to. It's not your fault, Annie. No one can blame you for this, and you mustn't blame yourself. It was from me the Clintons took of it and died. They died. And Kathleen and we, Sarah, and my brothers. My sister, my mother, my father. Oh, no. No. Merciful mother of God, no. Them that has been nearest to me has died, and I killed them. I killed them. Annie. We want to help you. You're lying to me. You must be. It can't be true. You know I wouldn't hurt Jenny. I'd die for her. You know that. You're a liar. You're a liar. Annie. Annie.
Doctor, how long has Annie been like this? Oh, possibly since she was a child. She thought she escaped the fever on board ship, but she may have had a light case which left her a carrier. Is there any hope? Well, it depends on Annie. On people who may care enough to do the things that'll have to be done. I know there's a reason in this. It must be you're punishing me for my sinfulness. Why else should everyone I reach out to with love be touched with pain and death? I don't ask that you lift this awful curse from me, but the little child, dear Jenny. What sin could there be in her? She's as close as I am likely to having a loved child of my own. Let her live, dear God. Don't let her die. I promise I'll live out the days and nights ahead, just like you said for me. Trying only to bring no more pain and hurt on anyone else. But my Jenny, my Jenny, don't let her die. Don't let her die, dear. Mr. Hale, how is Jenny? Well, the doctor says the worst is over with. I expected you back, Annie. I promised if Jenny could live, I'd go away. I thought it was best for everybody. Well, one of the wonderful things about human beings, Annie, is their adaptability. With the help of those who care, if we have to, we can learn to live without arms, without legs, without eyes. It's a different kind of life, but it's still life. But don't you see? With me, it's different. The hurt is to others. Well, you can still learn to live with it, Annie. If you try. Dan. Who's with Jenny? She's with the doctor. They'll manage till you get there. I can't go back, Dan. I mustn't. Jenny will be all right. But next it would be Eddie. They want you back. Almost as much as I do. What kind of life would they have if people find out about me? You saw how decent people become when they so much as hear the word typhoid. The doctor can cure you. It won't be an easy cure. Or a short one. You'll have to be away from us for a year. Maybe longer. But while we're apart, at least we'll have some hope to live on. I think what's between you and me, Annie, is, is worth fighting to keep. Don't you, 